Ladies and gentlemen, hey, welcome, welcome, welcome to Renee Box Young, a platform where we simply discuss, critique, and analyze, and simply talk about the sport of boxing in a level headed, mature, coherent fashion. Definitely, subscribers since day one, recent subscribers, I appreciate each and every one of you. You guys are all awesome, man. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for tuning into the, the Flash Lives, you know, the previously scheduled lives. You know, the premieres, you know, of, of my videos such as this right now, tuning in real time, chatting away there. I love it. You know what I'm saying? And as you guys notice, you know, uh, when you tune into premieres, I, I chat away with you too during the premiere. You know, we just watch together and enjoy the content definitely and just chop it up about the, you know, subject matter that we're talking about in the videos. You know what I'm saying? And playback family. Hey, you guys are awesome. Thank you guys so much also for commenting in the comment sections of the videos you know, afterwards also. I do my best, you know, to answer the comments also, man, definitely. So I appreciate you all. If you love the sport of boxing, go ahead and subscribe. If you love it, it's as simple as that. You know what I'm saying? We don't do, I don't, I don't, you know, beef with other platforms, nothing like that. We just love the sport of boxing and talk about it and opinionate. That's what it's about, man. You know, simple as that. Make life simple, you know? And I want to talk about this. Where, where should I start? Like, okay, watch this. You know, it's about, it's about, just pay-per-view in general, I'm not necessarily just nitpicking at, you know, Floyd Mayweather and Leonard Ellerby. And that's what I want to start with as far as this. You know, I got to lay this foundation as I always do with my videos, right? So that there's no twisted, you know, interpretations on what I speak about and my perspective and, you know, my approach. You know, um, I've said it before, you know what I'm saying, concerning Floyd Mayweather. I mean, very intelligent man, you know what I'm saying? Like... In, as a fighter, you know, he's not fighting, obviously, anymore, but, um, you know, as a pro boxer, he's he's one of my favorites. He's one of my all-time favorites, and I don't do that pound-for-pound pound stuff. I don't do that, you know, number one, two, three, four, at top ten. I mean, yeah, maybe top ten, but, like, pound-for-pound pound stuff, I don't do that. It's too controversial and subjective, but just for me, you know, Floyd as a fighter, you know, I, I reference him constantly when it comes to, you know, you know, breaking down fights, when it comes to defense and, you know, styles and approaches in the ring, IQ. Floyd, man, he's one of my all-time favorites, definitely, man. I love him, you know, how how he fought, what, you know, just, just it's just fun watching him fight, you know. Um, not necessarily too much the, the exhibition stuff, but, okay, so, you know, just, just you understand, this is no, this is no, you know, me hating on anybody, you know, I never do that on this platform anyway, so I, that's what I'm saying, people trip, get things twisted, you know, but, nah, man, definitely my respect to Floyd, you know, and what he has done in his career, just as, and I've, I've said it before, it's not, it's not a secret, as a promoter, you know, Floyd, as promoter, I, I don't really, you know, I just don't see too much, you know, attention getting stuff, you know, but it is what it is. I guess I feel the same with the, a, a lot of promoters anyway, the same way. So, you know, and I've talked about that many times on their other shows, but, you know, so, you know, I want to talk about that, you know, and about, you know, Leonard Ellerby also, you know, with this whole, you know, pay-per-view stuff and not just him. I mean, you know, whatever, whatever platforms out there that are pushing pay-per-view events that are not worth pay-per-view that's what i want to talk about okay and obviously as of late recently uh we heard of the numbers okay now i, I want to start with this okay i, I got to show you I, I i mentioned this in my last video but it wasn't the topic i i, I kind of talked a little bit about it because i was making a point concerning pay-per-view but it seems like uh this pay-per-view stuff is getting kind of going too far it's going a little bit too far you know ever ever since the tank and roly fight was announced I honestly, as a fan, as a, as a fan of the sport of boxing, I'm no man fan. Got to make that clear again. You know what I'm saying? Not, not, I'm not a man fan. I'm not, you know, going to defend a fighter or an event that's not worth being defended. You know what I'm saying? And I, it doesn't matter who it is, you know? So when this whole Tank Rowley stuff was announced, that fight was announced, I, you know, I mean, Rowley, he's a fight, he can fight, you know, he he, he, he brings it, he brings in the ring, gotta respect that, I, you know, I always respect fighters that, 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 that lay it on the line and fight in the ring, I gotta respect everybody who jumps in that ring, you know what I'm saying, not everybody can do that, you know, I've said it many times also in previous sessions, and I, and I repeat myself for the fact that, you know, I, we got new listeners too, you know, new subscribers, you know, definitely salute, thank you guys so much, and, you know, I've sparred and, and trained, you know, for approximately about eight months, you know, and I've sparred more than I've, you know, kind of trained outside the ring. I sparred a lot, you know, and I know what it is to get hit in the face. I know what it is, you know, and that that's the criticism a lot of people out there say that even fighters, some, not all of them, but, you know, some fighters have criticized fans and I, I, I understand that, but, you know, some fighters 
have criticized fans that you know saying that you know what 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 your your opinion is ain't worth it because you don't even know what it is to get in the ring you know i understand that viewpoint but then again like you know fans are fans we just love what we see and we we want to see entertainment and you know fans pay for a service and they want to see you know athletes you know perform to the best of their abilities etc etc top competition you know i talked about that in my last video um so i mean i understand that viewpoint you know what i'm saying uh, but at the same time, you can't criticize everybody just because they haven't been in the ring. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like it's kind of like you know, you just pop in my mind. Like if you're if you're a fan of movies, right? You go watch a movie, and you know it's not maybe the best acting performance that a certain actor has given, and you criticize that actor on social media or wherever. And then that actor, I've never heard an actor say that. As a matter of fact, maybe so, you can put in the chat, but you know, you really don't hear that. That's what I'm saying. You don't really hear that from actors saying, well, you don't know what it's like to act. You don't know what, you know, what it is to, you know, put on a persona and a character that I've never been before or whatever. You don't hear that. You don't hear that, you know what I'm saying, with those you know, in, in any other. So that's why when fighters come out with that, you know, I guess argument saying you don't know what it is getting the ring. And I understand that. But you also got to understand the, the, the perspective of fans. Fans pay for events, you know. And, and in my humble opinion, that's why I'm speaking as a fan of the sport of boxing. You know, I, I didn't dig the whole Roly uh, Tank Davis thing, man. I mean, yeah, it was going to be an entertaining fight. A lot of people defended that also saying... It's going to be entertaining, you know, because Rolly's an entertainer and he's going to be a joker, you know, in the press conferences, blah, blah, blah. I didn't see no, you know, I wasn't really uh, excited about that fight. Just, I'm just going to be honest, you know what I'm saying? Um, and I put on social media also on Twitter, man, um, and that's why Ellen, Leonard Ellerby blocked me. I, I was thinking about putting video, pushing a video on it, but and I got the receipts and all that to prove when he blocked me and what I was saying. I probably will, but I don't know. I don't think it's really necessary, but I can, you know, but. You know, he blocked me because I was talking about that, you know, that, you know, Leonard Ellerby, it seems like, and, you know, Mayweather, it's not Tank's fault. That's why Tank's not in this thumbnail. You know, it's not his fault at all. Nothing against Tank at all, man. Amazing fighter. But the, the events that they're pushing, man, and not just them, but, like, just generally, some events that are being pushed out there and they're, 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 they're you know, charging fans a certain amount of money to watch mediocre or performances where you know and mediocre why we're gonna say in a moment performances where you know who's gonna win it's just so obvious and that's why i thought about you know that's why i thought roly and tank i was like why are they matching them up with this guy man and then and then when roly pulls out because of that whole situation whatever right the law whatever you know sexual stuff whatever it was yeah alleged okay i don't know um then and then they put pitbull in and pitbull he surprised me definitely surprised me he, he gave a great, great performance, man. But I wasn't too excited about the Pitbull fight either. But I watched it, obviously, because I'm a sucker for the sport. And I personally thought Tank was going to knock him out and it was going to be over quick. But wow, hey, Pitbull, salute, man. Pitbull, salute. Um, so the thing here is this, man. I want to say this, that there was, a, there was an interview, and let's get to this pay-per-view thing, okay? I, it seemed like apparently according to uh rick glaser okay rick glaser and and i gotta say this man okay i listen to a lot of platforms out there okay maybe sometimes i don't chat away all the time i don't have time sometimes i don't you know play words i don't have time sometimes right <laughs> but i listen to a lot of platforms i'm selective in what i listen to okay um and i list i learn from everybody okay and i've said it time and time again i was on i was on a platform some time ago and i was asked by somebody hey what are you doing here it's like you know, I, I, I've addressed that, too, before in the live sessions, you know, and I understand that, you know, but it, it, it's 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 a limited, you know, in the box mentality to think you don't belong in this platform. Yeah, it's discrimination, man. That, <laughs> but whatever, people can think what they want. But, you know, I listen to everybody. That's my point, you know, um, and I learn from everybody, you know, definitely those who genuinely love the sport of boxing, even though they might be at war with another platform. I don't get into that stuff. That's not for me. I have no time for that. Other people do. That's fine. You do your things whatever everybody has their own approach and their own you know what i'm saying every, i've said it before so many times every platform has their approach and perspective you know but my, my approach is not that i have no time for warring with anybody you know life is too short i can't do that you know because sometimes it gets too far it goes way too far with some you know these platforms out there and i've said it before ladies and gentlemen i've said it before a long time ago 
I wouldn't be surprised, man, if YouTube starts doing some stuff where they really start canceling channels out for doing this kind of stuff. You know, it, it just goes too far and it's ridiculous sometimes. You know, they, they, people get real serious and it goes out in the streets. That That's nonsense right there. You know what I'm saying? But whatever. I listen to everybody, okay? And Rick Glaser, he was interviewed. This is what I'm trying to say here. He was interviewed. Shouts out to Coach Malachi, man. Great content on this interview. Wow. I mean, this guy, Rick Glaser. Now, <clears throat> I'm not the best. Like I said, I'm not the best with knowing all these guys. There are so many people, elements, and moving pieces, and, and, and important players, whatever you want to call them. In the sport of boxing, I have no time. And fighters, we're not even talking about fighters, man. We're talking about the businessmen, the guys in suits, the insiders, the writers, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I have no time to research all these people. But <laughs> So Rick Glaser, he was interviewed by Coach Malachi. Salute, man, to him, man. Um, and I want to show you this, okay? Who's Rick Glaser, just in case somebody doesn't know who that is? Because I really don't know who that was. I didn't know who that was. I mean, I, I remember seeing him somewhere... On Twitter, I, I remember, you know, seeing some posts he has, you know, concerning boxing. Because, you know, on your Twitter feed, sometimes they are, you know, you get recommended of certain people. I don't know. Okay. So, yeah, Rick Glaser, um, you know, some guy on Twitter, Boxing Insider, I guess. And I researched just a little bit about him because I really don't have time to research too much. But because, I, I, you know, I study a degree. I'm busy, man. So, but I understand that Rick Glaser, just, just by listening to the interview, you know, from Coach Malachi on his channel, um, I kind of understood what, what, who he is. And I think personally, okay, I mean, people can think what they want. A lot of people could think maybe other things about him, but it seems like his information is quite legit and quite, and quite trustworthy. You know, it's hard to trust everybody in the sport of boxing and sources, right? Because some sources are biased. Some sources, you know, they try to defend other people to the death and, you know, they never do wrong or what have you. But, you know, that's why it's kind of hard sometimes to trust sources but this guy it seems quite legit who is rick glaser let's check it out so rick glaser okay this is this is like his uh you know he has his uh glaserboxing.com link in the description i'm gonna leave all that link in the description stuff okay so you can check it out right here and it's an introduction so it looks like here i mean you can see it here clearly right he's a international agent broker and consultant with four decades of worldwide boxing experience you know, this gives a, a, a breakdown on who he is. I hope you can see that clearly. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, I think get right there. Let me just double check right there. Thing. Okay, sorry about that. So it says there, I've been providing. So he says right here, right? I mean, I've been providing, giving a presentation of himself. I have been providing services to the, prof to the professional uh, boxing business worldwide at a high level since 1991. Okay, so clients have included promoters, managers, fighters, casinos, networks, TV production companies, media outlets, attorneys, and a reality TV show. Okay, <laughs> so, you know, what he said, man, on uh, concerning that interview with Coach Malachi, man, I mean, he talked about the numbers, the pay-per-view numbers. I mean, this guy, he got connections, man. According to what he was saying, what we saw there on the, on the on his website, you know, and I don't really doubt too much about him. Like I said, I don't know all these guys, man, but it seems like he knows what he's talking about. Definitely. That's why I'm taking my time out to even mention this guy. Um, you know, he talked about how, if I'm not mistaken, he was talking to, you know, you got to go check that interview. I'm going to leave that in the link in the description, okay? Link in the description of that interview from Coach Malachi's channel. Definitely, man. Um, so, and he, you know, Coach Malachi, man, he, 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 you know, he even told, you know, and he said in the interview there, or I'm sorry, on that show, he said, you know, this is free use. Go ahead and use this, you know, interview or what have you. So that's great stuff, man. So, you know, he talked about how he was talking to Leonard Ellerby or something like that and, you know, that Leonard Ellerby blocked him too, okay? <laughs> I mean, I understand, man, you know what I'm saying? When it comes to, you you know, Leonard Ellerby, man, has that. He Like, if you say something that he doesn't agree with or doesn't like, he's going to block you automatically. You're gone from Twitter, at least, okay? He did that to me, even though I was speaking respectfully about him, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, I'll probably push a video on it. I got the receipts. I got the chat. I got the, the posts and stuff like that, and right, bam, he blocked me right after. But... You know, it seems like, you know, he blocked Rick, Rick Glaser, too. So Rick Glaser talked about that, too, that, you know, I guess he was talking to Leonard Ellerby, you know, saying things. They were going back and forth on Twitter, too, something like that. And, uh, you know, he blocked him. So, and it was about this, about the pay-per-view numbers, man, that, you know, I guess, I don't know. I guess they're trying to hide it or something like that, Ellerby, Ellerby and Floyd Mayweather, because of the flop, man. Because it was a flop. And this is just an example to get my point across on pay-per-views, man. I'm not a pay-per-view guy. Got to make that clear real quick, man. Um, I should have said that in the beginning of this video. I'm not a pay-per-view guy. Um, I don't do numbers. I've constantly said that on this channel, and I repeat it because, 
like I said, for new viewers, for new listeners, and just to refresh in our memories, right? I don't, I can care less about, you know, uh, how much a pay-per-view show did, a fight did, an event. I freaking don't know anything really about the whole back end stuff. You know, oh, they paid him in the back end. He gets $5 million in the back end. You know, what the heck does that mean? I really don't know. And I really don't care. I mean, it's great to know that fighters getting paid, though. That That's definite. You know, that the well-being and, and, you know, that they're being provided for. They can take care of their families. That's, that's essential. But when it comes to all this back end, you know, I'm not a freaking promoter. I'm not a business guy. I don't do this stuff. I'm not in the, I'm not there in freaking contracts. I'm not there in meetings. And I'm not sitting there negotiating with fighters. And I, that's freaking, that's their business. That's their job. You know, I just want to see fights. You know, <laughs> why am I making this video then? Because... If someone like me needs to talk about this and wants to talk about it, that means that this is getting out of hand. <laughs> That's why I'm making this video. There are there are people out there, man, they break it down to a T, the pay-per-view numbers, you know, platforms and, you know, YouTube channels out there, you know, on the sport of boxing. They're freaking amazing on that stuff. I'm not, you know. But if it's getting my attention, I think it's freaking, it's getting out of hand. So, Rick Glaser, man, um, he talked about, you know, that... You know, with all his his years of experience, he's been really, really precise on the pay per view numbers when it comes to projecting analysis or what have you, looking at the algorithms or whatever he does. You know, and he projects kind of uh, the number of approximately fifty fifty two thousand pay per view buys for Tank and the Pitbull event. Man, you know, it was a flop. It was that's that's horrible. Okay, and I'm not a pay per view guy. For me to say that. You know, that, that, that's horrible. And, and and why am I saying this? Because people like, and not just them, but, you know, Floyd Mayweather, LRB, Al Heyman, or whoever, you know, these pay-per-view guys, I don't know, man, you know, Bob Arum, all these, you know, promoters. And this is just an example. That's why I'm, you know, I'm talking about, you know, that's why I'm mentioning LRB and Floyd Mayweather. It, it gets out of hand. Now, I'm going to show you some more, some more stuff, okay? But it, it, it it's too much, man. I mean... What do you expect? I mean, how how can you be charging fighters? I personally think that, you know, Tank Davis and, and even Rowley, P Tank Davis and Rowley, you know, Tank Davis and Pitbull, it should have been just a normal, you know, I guess they call it, you know, channel, free TV, whatever they call it, right? Network TV fight. And it's a, an amazing way to pull in more people, you know what I'm saying? But let, let me show you this, man. Here are some more examples on how this pay-per-view stuff is getting a little bit too far. It's getting a little bit too far, a lot of it too far, okay? This pay-per-view stuff's getting a little bit too out of hand, you know what I'm saying? And I'm going to show you another one, too. <laughs> Man, you know, so, really? Really? This is not a championship bout fight. You know, in my humble opinion, these pay-per-view events, man, got to be champ versus champ. Top real champs. Said that also in my last video, I mentioned that. You know, I'm not talking about these freaking regular champs. I'm not talking about these interims, intercontinental. I mean, all due respect, though, but... I'm talking about real champ. For example, you know, Spence versus Ugas. Okay, pay-per-view. I get it. I definitely get that. Charlo versus freaking Castano. Are you kidding me? Uh, undisputed rematch? 154? That's definitely worth pay-per-view, ladies and gentlemen. Come on now. You know, there are some fights that are definitely worth pay-per-view. Tyson Fury, Wilder. Should I continue? You know, Tyson Fury, Wilder trilogy. One, two, three. I mean, I'm telling you, those are worth pay-per-view. Canelo versus Caleb Plant. Should I continue this stuff, man? I mean, you all know what I'm saying here. Canelo versus Plant, unfreaking disputed at, at, at 168. Are you kidding me? That's worth pay-per-view. But this, that, that's what I'm saying, guys. You know, ladies and gentlemen, kings and queens, and please don't think about. I'm, I'm not nitpicking and saying that PBC sucks and they're horrible. No, I love watching PBC fights. Great platform. Yeah, you know, I got to make that clear, ladies and gentlemen. Come on now. I got to make that clear. Great platform. I don't even think, I don't even think, I'm not, you know, I'm not sure. I, I, maybe it's debatable. Maybe it's debatable. You know, Bud versus Porter. Uh, I think that was pay-per-view too, but mm, maybe it was worth it. I don't know. That's kind of, you know, borderline stuff for me. But, but anyways, you see what I'm trying to say here. It gets too far. Ortiz. This is not a championship bout fight, ladies and gentlemen. King Kong Ortiz versus Martin. When was the last time Ortiz fought? I heard, I think it was Rick Glaser said it in that in the interview, man. I think he said, like, Ortiz is, like, pushing 52 years old or something. You know, they don't give his real age or something like that. I don't know, man. I really don't, you know. But, you know, Ortiz, I don't think he's no 32-year-old guy. 
you know, and when was the last time he fought? I don't know, you know, it's just, it's just, um, and Charles Martin? Is this worth pay-per-view, ladies and gentlemen? Please answer me. Please opinionate. I need you just, you know, you're, and, and if you think it is, that's great. But I highly doubt this is going to do big numbers, man. Just like Tank and Pitbull flopped, people aren't stupid. You see, that's, that's what I sometimes think. These promoters, Bob Arum has said it. Leonard Ellerby, I think, has said it. And that's where I pushed, on, you know, on Twitter. Nobody answered me as of yet, but... You know, Bob Arum, at least, I can refer to. If I'm not mistaken, he referred to fans as you can kick... They're like cans. You can kick them wherever you want. How the heck can you talk about fans who freaking are your customers? You cannot... You shouldn't talk about fans like that, ladies and gentlemen. This is horrible. How can a freaking promoter talk about fans being like cans? Kick them wherever you want. That's... That's... That's ridiculous. I'm, I gotta speak out on this. We're... We're... You know, fans aren't stupid. You know what I'm saying? And and I think Leonard Ellerby and Floyd got the message. I think they got the message with approximately 50, 52,000 uh, 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 pay-per-view buys. Get the message and wake up. These promoters, I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you. You can't, you can't, you can't think we're stupid. That fans out there are stupid. They're paying their hard-earned money. You know, I'm sorry, man. I just got to speak it out, you know? Ortiz versus Martin... Martin, sorry, uh, Charles Martin, use that Spanish pronunciation, right? <laughs> uh, you know, Sanchez versus Negron, okay? Pay-per-view, you know. Thurman versus Barrios, main event, okay? Santa Cruz versus Carbajal, okay. Santa Cruz is coming back, cool. Ramos versus, Ramos versus Lob oh, Neri, awesome, versus Castro, you know. But is this worth pay-per-view? Main event, Thurman versus Barrios? Th Thurman? Is this the Thurman that, you know, is this the Thurman that hasn't fought in like two years or something? Two and a half years? I don't freaking know how long. It's a long time ago. Coming back for a warm-up fight, I guess you could say. Barrios coming from 140 to fight at 147. It's that Thurman? Really? It's not even close to a championship bout, ladies and gentlemen. And that's a main event for pay-per-view? You know, that, that's ridiculous, man. I mean, it sounds like I'm repeating myself in this, but that's another event I'm saying that's ridiculous that they're charging pay-per-view for. It's like, wow, man. Wow. You know, are you going to pay for this, ladies and gentlemen? Are you guys going to watch this? And there are people out there that do that black box stuff. You're going to have a lot more people tuning in and streaming it in, in, in the wrong way. You know, paper, you know... Floyd Mayweather was was complaining about it recently in the in the in the in the lead up, you know, in a press conference or whatever. Post before, I don't know when the heck it was, but you know, it was in the lead up or after or whatever when he was wearing that red jumpsuit, right? Um of the uh tank and pitbull fight. Talking about, you know, hey, you guys are robbing the fighters. You guys are robbing the fighters if you don't pay for pay-per-view fights. If you don't pay for the event. You know, if you're streaming it, you're robbing them. You're robbing the fighters. I mean, what the heck do you expect then? If you're giving freaking Every little fight for pay-per-view. I don't mean little that, you know, I'm not trying to disrespect, you know, or minimizing fighters in any way. No, but I'm talking about, you know, y'all know what I'm talking about. What do you expect fi uh, uh, fans to do? They're not going to buy all these pay-per-view events. It's ridiculous, man. <laughs> it's ridiculous, you know. So, what do you think, man? Please comment in the comment section. Like I said, just to clarify... You know, links in the description of, of these references that I gave. Okay, you know, uh, the interview, Coach Malka. And there, one more thing. One more thing. It's a trip because, you know, people are speaking out, man. And, you know, I've said it many times, you know, on, on live sessions, things of that nature, videos. Social media, you know, it's, it's a blessing and a curse. You know, I get it. But, you know... People who legitly and uh, coherently, you legitimately, you know, with receipts or whatever you call it, speak out on something, you know, it, it's 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 not trolling. It's not, you know, and that's the awesome thing that we have. We have a voice. I've said it before several times. We have a voice, ladies and gentlemen. We've got to speak out on these kind of things. We have a voice to a certain extent of this, to this impact. Watch this. I've said it before and I'm going to prove it to you. Okay, check it out real quick. Now I want to show you this, okay? This is, uh, you know, Michael Benson's uh, Twitter account. You know, link in the description of everything, everything we're seeing today, okay? So, 
Um, this is Michael Benson and what concerning Tommy Fury, what he said. How does this relate? I'm going to show you the impact of social media, ladies and gentlemen. I've said this since months and months ago. I've talked about this in videos and, you know, live sessions. We have a voice, man. That's my point in this. And we got to speak out about, about this kind of stuff, about the ridiculousness of, of the pay-per-view stuff. You know, you, you, fans aren't stupid, and we got to speak out on it. You know, it says here, you know, Tommy Fury on abuse for pulling out of Jake Paul fight. This is the point here I'm trying to get, one aspect of what he's saying. Going on what? Social media, right? Every message is terrible. Going on social media, every message is terrible. Going on social media, everybody has a voice. That's the point of me showing that, okay? Tyson, oh, I'm sorry, Tommy Fury feels it. All the fighters feel it, you know? As controversial as, as, that, as it may sound, Oscar Valdez is feeling it. He felt it in the lead-up to the Consecchio fight, whatever that, pronounce that dude's name, who put up a really good fight. I didn't even see the fight. I just saw some clips or whatever. I didn't even see the fight, honestly, because I really got discouraged as a, fi as a fight fan with that whole fitterbean, menfetamine, whatever the heck he tested positive for. I know it's controversial. I'm not a freaking scientist. I'm not even going to get back to that. You check my post-fight reaction. You check the lead-up. I made a video on that. You check it out. That's my input. <laughs> okay. But he felt it. Oscar Valdez felt it. You know what I'm saying? When he popped that positive for that. Social media, he said, man. Left and right. People are saying this and that. And rightfully so to a degree. People have... I'm not talking about the trolling people. I'm not talking about those who, you know, unjustfully talk about things and, you know cyberbullying i never support that you know and that big ups to jake paul come on now i know everybody wants to criticize him but I've, I've given my props to jake paul man i have my videos are about that check it out in the channel you know i've talked about that too and i give my two cents about jake paul I, I i respect jake paul on this also you know the cause you know, one of the causes of him boxing is he wants to you know fight against bullying come on now ladies and gentlemen it goes deeper you know the cyberbullying stuff he's felt it too and he's talked about how it really it does hurt people man and fighters feel it too. Promoters feel it too. And I'm not talking about, I don't promote the cyberbullying stuff. Heck no. You know, cyberbullying, you know, I don't, I don't promote that. I'm talking about the aspect of how we as genuine fans of the sport of boxing have a voice. And we got to speak out. We got to speak out. I never complain. I really don't complain. Sometimes I do about sport of boxing and certain things. And this is one of the things to complain about. Check out my channel. I really don't throw rants. You know, we have a voice, ladies and gentlemen, and that's the awesome thing about social media. And I understand it. I understand it. Don't get it twisted. I'm not talking about the trolling. Got to reiter reiterate that. And that's where, if I'm not mistaken, Mike Tyson was referring to some time ago. He said everybody has, you know, an opinion on social media, but they never, you know, get, you know, I don't remember. I'm just paraphrasing. I think it was Mike Tyson who said it, you know, but they, you know, they never, they never get punched in the mouth for it or something like that. You know, I, I understand that point of view, but this, again, the, then again, you know, maybe he's referring to the to the trolls or stuff like that. You know, because there some people go too far and it's stupid. You know, they 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 definitely they start disrespecting and you know throwing racial slurs and you know that's trolling and that's stupid. You know, and they, they go too far. You know, you can decipher who who is genuine and who is not. Okay, and I'm talking about the genuine fans. You know, who love the sport of boxing and you know we're not stupid. And you can't abuse fans so much like that. You can't even, you shouldn't abuse fans like that, you know, charging everything for pay, for pay-per-view. And this was definitely a flop. This was definitely a flop. You know, this whole tank, uh, pitbull stuff. And, and I, and I hope that events that don't work, aren't worth being, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not for jeopardizing a fighter and their purses or whatever. No, that's just, you know, that's stuff I don't really get into, but you know, it, it gets ridiculous sometimes paying pay-per-view for all these things hard earned money from fans you know so hey man please let me know what you think man um you know what do you think about all this uh <laughs> do you think those fights are worth pay-per-view do you think they're gonna do more of this will this trend continue there has been speculation even because of this whole pay-per-view stuff that you know al Heyman's gonna go out of business i don't know teal Fimo lopez said it like i really trust what a lot of teal Fimo has said lately <laughs> not really but you know he did mention that also that you know you know you know, because he and he also mentioned how HBO went out of business after 40 some odd years or whatever in boxing, right? Um, you know, in the boxing aspect, at least, you know, Teofimo did mention that, that, you know, PBC, they're going to be out of business soon or whatever. I really don't know. I freaking I don't get into that stuff. But 
you know, some people have speculated that. That, you know, they're just they're just doing pay-per-view on everything so they can cash out for their last, you know, their last run, I guess, or something. I don't know. I don't think they're going to run get out of business. Run, you know, I don't think they're going to go out of business or anything like that. But, you know, it's, they're taking it too far, man. What do you think about all this, man? Do you think it's going to continue? Um, you know, I don't think that, you know, I mean, there are some pay-per-view events that are definitely worth it. But, you know, sometimes it's just, it's just getting abusive, I think. But, hey, Renee Box Young, like it up, subscribe. If you love the sport of boxing, this is a place for you. Go ahead and hit the notification bell so you know when I do premieres such as this and when I do my live sessions, et cetera, et cetera, man. I appreciate each and every one of you. Renee Box Young, hey, peace out, fam. Thanks so much. I'm not a not too, not too